okay hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to another new video on my channel and this video is going to be on antiviral agents so let's begin with the video okay I'll use some animation this time a little more than previously so let's begin with the video on antiviral agents okay and I would like to tell I will uh, not uh, discuss any points that I don't feel are important I'll just discuss the points that I feel are very frequently tested on vnets and uh, questions on USMLE so these are the points that are a must know for you you can go into more details you can know about more stuff but these are the points which I think you are a must know you can afford to miss these points at least so let's begin with the video on antiviral agents okay ta -da. so this is a cell and this is a viral particle so let's see how a viral particle acts when it approaches a cell which are what are the stages it goes through and what are the checkpoints we can intervene and you know hit with our drugs so let's begin first of all is adsorption so the viral particle has to be adsorbed and it should penetrate the cell and then after penetrating it has to uncoat its cover envelop and it has to release, uh, release the viral uh, mRNA and DNA, whatever is inside. And then after that, there is early protein synthesis. Then there is nucleic acid synthesis of the viral particles. And then there is late protein synthesis and processing. The viral uh, mRNA or viral DNA encodes or, you know, uh, orders the cell machinery to make the proteins for daughter virions and then and then there is packaging and assembly of the virions and then finally there is a release of the viral particles to infect new host cells so these are the stages or the checkpoints the viral particle goes through after entering the cell and finally releasing out of the cell to infect other new host cells so and these are the red uh, labels are marked these are the checkpoints where we can hit them with our drugs so we can hit adsorption, we can stop prevent the viral particle from uncoating itself so it, it does not release the uh, damaging its own coding sequences for our cells and then we can block nucleic acid synthesis of the viral particles and then we can prevent the late protein, protein processing and we can prevent packaging assembly and finally we can prevent release so let's see how do we do that okay so here as you can see these are the checkpoints and these are the drugs so let's see first one is enfuvirtide this is the drug that prevents the adsorption of the viral particle and <coughs> I'll discuss its details in, details in next slide and then amantadine this drug can prevent the uncoding of the viral particles and then reverse transcriptase inhibitors as you know as the name says they inhibit the enzyme reverse transcriptase so obviously they will prevent the synthesis of MR uh, DNA from mRNA or they prevent the synthesis of DNA from RNA and then protease inhibitors they will prevent uh, the processing of the proteins synthesized by the viral DNA and they're particularly, particularly useful in HIV infections but n of no use in influenza why that I'll tell you in another slide and next is rifampin this prevents the packaging and assembly and finally are neuraminidase inhibitors they prevent the release of virus particles very useful in influenza A and B like drugs like oseltamivir, zanamivir uh, belong to this category so enfuvirtide, amantadine, RTIs these can include NRTIs, NNRTIs protease inhibitors, rifampin and neuraminidase inhibitors <coughs> so let's see them one by one but before that I would like to see two things one you can see this mnemonic on the side ear pin this is also in uh, according with the order of the drugs you can see <coughs> e is for enfuvertide a for amantadine r is for rtis and rifampin both p is for protease inhibitors and n is for neura neuraminidase inhibitors so this is for ear pin okay also i would like to tell one more interesting fact about amantadine that it is an anti-Parkinsonian drug also so amantadine is an antiviral drug that is also used in Parkinson's disease because it 
not only increases the release of dopamine from uh, dopaminergic neurons but also it prevents the reuptake of dopamine into those neurons so it's a good anti parkinsonian drug and it's a good antiviral drug especially uh, you can find rinets on this okay so let's move on to the next slide and discuss all of them one by one <coughs> okay non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors so reverse transcriptase inhibitors enzymes which inhibit reverse transcriptase uh, or drugs that inhibit reverse transcriptase uh, belong to two categories non-nucleoside and nucleoside so let's begin with NNRTIs or non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors okay so about NNRTIs I'll just show you in an animation non okay as you can see non-nucleoside required no intracellular phosphorylation this is the most important thing so uh, this is the basic bottom line difference between NNRTIs and NRTIs it's that NNRTIs do not require any phosphorylation or activation inside the cell to act so they just go and act while NRTIs require to be first of all converted into a triphosphate active form to act okay <coughs> next are two ends um, non-nucleoside, no intracellular phosphorylation, navirapine, the most frequently asked drug, and NED is the mnemonic for these three, navirapine, efavirenz, delavirdin. Uh, you can remember DEN too. So, okay, important points about these that are that you will encounter in questions or MCQs is that NNRTIs are frequently in uh, associated with severe side effects first of all first of them is life-threatening hepatic failure in and encephalopathy <coughs> they can cause severe hepatic failure which can cause encephalopathy obviously because ammonia gets accumulated and secondly they can cause severe skin re reactions like Stevens Johnson's necrolysis and toxic epidermal necrolysis as you can see in the slide so uh, these are three or four points that you must keep in mind about NNRDIs are no intracellular phosphorylation for activation, navirapine, and severe hepatic failure and skin reactions can occur with these drugs. Okay, also I would like to add one more, more point uh, here. Navirapine is a good drug used uh, frequently for the prophylaxis in pregnant mothers to prevent the transmission of HIV from mother to the child so <coughs> navirapine has a use in that too and that is also also sometimes tested so you can remember these points about NNRTIs navirapine in prevention of HIV transmission from mother to child and severe side effects of these drugs mm -hmm. hepatic failure and skin reactions and they do not require any phosphorylation so this is all about NNRTIs that you must must know and next is we'll go to NRTIs okay so I think you're happy about this okay so these are NRTIs or nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors okay <coughs> these include zirovudine or AZD zelcetabine and didenosine so we can go into as much details as we want to but this is a short video on the points that are as I said most frequently tested are the points that are a must know and you can't afford to miss these points at least so let's see those two or three points that I have compiled for you guys so okay first of all yeah as I said they require phosphorylation and that's the bottom line difference between them NRTIs require phosphorylation to become active and non nucleoside reverse transcript inhibitors do not require any phosphorylation on no phosphorylation <coughs> okay so they require phosphorylation <coughs> phosphorylation also I would like to add on an extra point if you would like to know is that they get converted into an active triphosphate form and that is true uh, first uh, phosphorylation or the monophosphate form is formed through the viral kinase enzyme and the triphosphate form is later on formed by the host cell kinase enzymes so if you would like to know anyhow 
<coughs> that's how the phosphorylation happens and then they become active so I would like now I'd like to see uh, share some important side effects that are tested in vinets first is zedovidine yeah I hope you liked it okay so bone marrow suppression zedovidine is notoriously very commonly related to bone marrow suppression and it can lead to anemias and granulocytopenias obviously so they may give you a question where their patient has anemia, granulocytopenia, pancytopenia and they can ask you what kind of a drug can the patient be on so if it seems like he is having some kind of infection or he's an HIV positive patient okay it's zetovidine okay and okay uh, sorry for that pause because I was just checking something else anyhow so bone marrow suppression is commonly related to zetovidine but there is one more drug that is related to bone marrow suppression and that is gancyclovir so I'll come to gancyclovir later in some next slide but uh, the point is that you are not supposed to give zetovidine and gancyclovir together because together with their synergistic effect they can lead to a severe bone marrow suppression and pancytopenia so be careful about that anyhow so zetovidine and NRTI non I mean nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor requires phosphorylation to become active and bone marrow suppression is the side effect next is an important side effect of didanosin and that is yeah pancreatitis didanosin is commonly associated with pancreatitis so you see a unit on pancreatitis and antiviral drugs are what you are thinking you can go for didanosin and if you have side effects of bone marrow suppression given then you can go for zetovidine or gancyclovir that will come later on. that will come to it uh, after a while okay so i hope you're happy to know about these drugs uh, again i'm showing you the main page and pubertide amantadine rtis protease inhibitors rapamine and neuraminidase inhibitors erpin so let's go to our next slide on protease inhibitors okay I guess I need to get work better with the animation stuff so that it goes okay so protease inhibitors ritonavir sequinavir these are the protease inhibitors now what do protease inhibitors do okay so what happens is that some virus particles uh, before making virion particles make a long polyprotein inside the cell so like in HIV first of all a long polyprotein is synthesized and then that long polyprotein is cleaved or broken into smaller parts uh, by proteases and those smaller proteins are then packaged and assembled and ultimately they are lead to the formation of mature virus particles so they help in cleaving those polyproteins that are synthesized in the earlier stages of viral replication so if we give, give an inhibitor for these proteases the polyprotein cannot cleave and obviously uh, processing of the proteins cannot occur and ultimately the uh, maturation and assembly cannot occur and the viral replication stops so this that is why we give protease inhibitors so let's discuss them in more detail yeah as i said prevent the assembly and maturation of the virus and non-functional or non-infectious viral virions are produced and <coughs> the processing of the proteins cannot occur bottom line is that okay the second point is they are useful in hiv as i said because it produces hiv produces a polyprotein and uh, which is cleaved uh, with the proteases and these protease inhibitors prevent the cleavage but they are of no use in influenza as in because in influenza <coughs> in influenza the proteins are already formed in smaller segments and they do not require cleavage so there is no use of protease and so no use of protease inhibitors so that's the bottom line about uh, these drugs that they are useful in HIV but of no use in influenza 
Okay, so there's a small animation I'm gonna show you. Okay, this is the polyprotein, and these are proteases, and they cleave this polyprotein, leading to formation of smaller processed proteins, which are ultimately assembled and matured, and they lead to formation of finally the matured virion particle. So this is what is the function of proteases, and this is what protease inhibitors do. They prevent the function of proteases. And as in influenza, there are no proteases are required. And there is no use of proteases in influenza. So no use of these drugs in influenza. <coughs> okay, next one is neuraminidase inhibitors. A long paragraph you can go through by pausing the video. But bottom line is these drugs help in release of virus particles out of the cell. Uh, first of all, they will, uh, I mean, it's... Uh, type of uh, let me see these drugs uh, bind to sialic acid residues on the host cell surface and cleave those uh, sialic acid residues and then finally help in the release of virion particles out of the cell so that's the main function of these I mean drugs Oseltamivir is the commonly tested one and also you can find Xenamivir in some questions but mainly Oseltamivir also called Tamiflu and it is useful in both influenza A and B can be used for both prevention and treatment of influenza A and B okay some other points about antiviral agents interferon alpha and beta these, uh, these are not drugs by interferons so these prevent the viral protein synthesis by increasing the <coughs> by I think I screwed up a bit they decrease the production and increase the degradation of foreign viral mRNA so you can reverse these errors I mean they destroy the foreign mRNA and they have no effect on the host mRNA so next is gancyclovir as I was discussing gancyclovir also causes bone marrow suppression it inhibits the host cell DNA synthesis and leads to neuro neutropenia, anemia and thrombocytopenia so never give this with cetovidine Okay, another important point about gancyclovir is that it is used in CMV infections. So if you see a minute on CMV infection and the drug is asked, you can just click on gancyclovir. So the two important points about this is this drug would be related to CMV infections and it causes pancytopenia similar to zidovidine and should not be given with zidovidine. Also <coughs> Yeah, I remember one more drug can be given for CMV infections and that is Foscarnet. Foscarnet inhibits DNA polymerase and it's a pyrophosphate analog. And uh, it can also be given for CMV infections but mainly Gancyclovir is used. So remember this Gancyclovir, CMV infections and pancytopenia. Next one is Infuvirtide which we discussed in the beginning of this uh, presentation. Uh, it prevents the fusion uh, GP41 fusion protein uh, it binds to that protein and it, in it inhibits the infusion of the virus particle inside the cell so moral line it prevents the entry of the cell virus into the cell so that is why it's important so I'll just take you to the first slide I have not done much good animation I guess okay so here we are. So neuraminidase inhibitors preventing release, protease inhibitors, RTI is a mantadine infovitide. We discussed all of this. Let's uh, here can you can remember to remember the order. Let's go to final slide again. Again, cyclovir with CMV and pancytopenia infovitide prevents the entry of the virus into the cell. Okay, this is lateralitigravir, another new drug. I thought of discussing that is an integrase inhibitor it and it prevents the attachment of viral DNA to host DNA so that's the main purpose of RLT gravir that is to prevent the fusion of viral DNA to host DNA so guys uh, that was it about uh, antiviral agents that I thought you you must know so uh, that's it and I hope you found this information useful so there could be much more details you can go into but uh, uh, these are the points that as I said must are a must know and 
you'll encounter them again and again when you solve MCQs. So just keep these things in mind about antiviral agents, about gamcyclovir, about impuvirtide, about raltegravir, about all the drugs I discussed. So I hope you liked it. And uh, this was almost about it. So it's over and I hope I gave you smiles from this video. So next time I'll see you in, in a new video on some new topic and till then if you are new to my channel and if you want to stay connected with all the videos I share then do click on the big subscribe button you can see on the screen now or you can click on the subscribe button given below this video and uh, don't forget to rate comment and uh, if you want to if you want me to discuss some topic you can write that in the comments below and uh, you can also check out my facebook page my blog and my twitter account and the description is given below in the description section okay so that was it i had to say see you next time in a new video till then all of you be happy god bless you enjoy the day and it's valentine's day so happy valentine's day to you all have a great day all the best good luck and goodbye